Hi, I'm Elga Valovirta, and this one is about Radial's new reamp station and reamp HP headphone reamper. What is a reamp station? It's basically these two legendary Radial Studios tables in one housing. So the J48 Active DI box and the JCR John Cuny Birdie reamp box, studio reamper. I've had these for years. I've, I've used these two on many productions, many recordings, you know, recording bass, whatever, DI guitars, reamping guitars for other bands, artists when I'm mixing. For the current Syrah album, I've been reamping Marcus's guitars, which we're actually going to do in this video. So basically, this is those two boxes in one. There's two sides, the DI side and the reamper side. It's an active DI box, so it needs uh, 48 volts phantom power. If we look at the front side, so to say, there's instrument in, where you plug, it, plug your guitar or your guitar to the pedal board and then here, and then this throughout. How I'm using this is that that is going to my amplifiers, so I can record a DI signal and amplifier at the same time if I want, and when I'm recording bass, I usually only record a DI, so, so that I don't need to switch back and forth ca cables, so everything's always connected. There's a buffer knob which can be usable with passive pickups. If you feel that uh, the signal is a bit weak, just add the buffer and you know, it will be strong again. With active pickups, uh, there's really not much much difference because active pickups have a you know, preamp, so there's enough buff buffering. And then the pad, I have this usually on because I have many active, many guitars with active pickups. My All my basses have active pickups. So this just uh, changed the signal down 15 dB, so it's not hitting too hard to the device. Then the JCR, John Cudiberry reamper size. So if there's a mute button, so, you know, if you're, you know, playing through reamping, you can maybe if you need to go to change the microphone placements or whatever, you know, you don't necessarily need to stop the recording or the playing, you know, when you're dialing sound, you can just press the mute button and then the amp, amp is quiet, so no signal is coming out. The filter, there's a high pass, low pass, and then, uh, you know, nothing so it's it's uh, like you know even how it was re recorded so this is usable if you feel that uh man that guitar di sound is too bright you can add a you know low pass filter or or if it has it's like too really basic basic tone you can dial that or if you feel that yeah it's a good di sound you know you don't have to do anything and this level this is a uh, with this you determine how hot the signal is going to your amplifier. So this is pretty much, uh, you know, you, you you need to find the sweet sweet spot where, where it is, where the amp. If it's too quiet, you feel the amp is it's a little bit weak. If it's if the signal is too hot, it, it's just feedback. So it's about finding the the sweet spot. And then this has a 3.5 millimeter input too, so you can use this. Also, reamp stuff directly from, let's say, your you know MacBooks or whatever laptops, you know, speaker jack jack out, which uh, this is more designed for. But you can do it with this too. In the back, you have amplifier out, link out, so you can link several devices. Let's say if you want to reamp for some reason multiple amps at the same time you can you know stack these and, and link these you know one signal out from the DAW and going into multiple places and then the reamp in there's a TRS cable and XLR cable options so this comes from your you know DAW and so on the lift this is something that I've seen a few videos about reamping, but I, I don't remember if anyone has talked about this. So the lift, this this should, and what it does, it lifts the ground loop if you have a hum. But what I, I've noticed, <laughs> don't ask me why, but most of my amps, they sound better when, when the 
lift is pressed in. When I take it out, they sound weaker and some squeal and some, you know, but most of my amps, they sound better when this is in. It's a ground loop. I'm not sure if it should have anything to do with the sound, but in here in my studio, it does. And I've, I've heard that uh, some other people who use this have, have noticed this too. So I don't know the technical side, but free tip. <laughs> If you feel that reamping with your familiar amp and it just doesn't feel the same like when you are actually playing it, it, it feels weaker and there's no bottom end. Just try this lift, press that in. At least to me, it does the magic. Then it sounds like it should sound. And then there's a 180, you know, face. That's for, let's say, if you're uh, monitoring yourself via amp and then. Uh, we are DI and you want to phase al align those kind of like what you need to do with, with your, you know, if you're miking a cab with two mic, you need to check the face. So you, you can do this, this with that too. But now what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect this and I'm going to reamp Marcus Unison's or Cyrus and other guitar players DI guitars because I'm mixing a song that's going to be on the forthcoming Syra album, one of the last songs we're working because we have a deadline <laughs> soon. So uh, this is actually happening. For real, so this stuff is going to be on the uh, on the album, and you know, I thought that this is a cool thing to do a video about this fantastic product. So let me hook this up, and then you know, let's do some reamping. The signal chain, the reamp station, from the reamp station to my pedal board, like I will, it would go from my guitar to my pedal board, from my pedal board to KHE Audio Electronics amp switcher. To the amps, in this case the JZM800 Bad Boy and the 5150, from the amps back to the KHE, from KHE's cabinet out to the Marshall cabinet, what I have there in another isolated room. There's actually two, one loaded with green backs and one loaded with two Marshall vintage speakers, the original V30s and one Celestin V30, the new Chinese made, the, the latest version with a see-through dust cap. It, it sounds actually really good, a lot, lot better, better than the previous one, not, not harsh at all. And then it has also one Eminence slash Friat P50E, which is kind of their take on a you know, V30 style speaker. Then the microphones, then the signal goes back via Radial's catapult system. The microphones are connected to the catapult and then it's there's a cat5 or cat6 cable coming i have another catapult here and then the signals from the mics four i have four microphones there are actually five it was uh, one the fredman mic i i sum there with the radials <laughs> two to one summing box so i get one signal from the fredman 157 one we are one one audix i5 they go to these warm audios WA412 microphone preamplifier, which is an API style preamp. And from the preamp, they go to the line ins of my audio interface. So that is the signal chain. First, let's listen. Marcus is just a DI sound. So I'm not going to screen record because I have this input monitoring on. So this is like how I would record when I would play myself. So I need to hear the guitar without any latency and stuff. Cool. And then now I'm gonna choose output, mono output, output number six, which is my reamp output. This cable here that go goes from the, from the DAW to the reamp box. And then left one, we're gonna first record the bad boy. Uh, let, let's listen to that. First, let me choose the bad boy here. Now it's the bad boy. Let's listen. Great. Let's go to the beginning and let's let Marcus play with the bad boy. Like a mofo. All right, so now I have reamped two tracks with the with the bad boy, SD1 bad boy, Marshall cabinet, Fredman style. Now I have the 5150. It's there, you can see it boosted with a TS808. Let's put it from the beginning. So now we have two Marshall tracks, and then now let's put a second 
track to the left. So now I'm using a same cabinet, a different speaker. Now this speaker is a Marshall Vintage speaker mic with a single SM57. So it, it's a different tone. I mean, the amp is different, but the overall tone is different. I have it pretty close to center, so it, I want that high because the Marshall provided the the mid hunk and because the Fredman miking technique it kind of cancels out those really high highs so I want to I want the 5150 now to provide me the low end and the top end all right so I reamped a bunch of the guitars so you can see from the screen here's the DIs that Marcus provided to me I muted them and Here's the lead guitars Marcus played. Those were DIs. Also, I reamped those with the uh, 85, which is my one of my JJ Mayhards from 85 with ER34s. With that, I didn't use a cabinet. I used Santrax Reactive Load and my signature IR Valo Virtuals from Jens Bulgren. The melody guitars, the same thing, Reactive Load, my signature IR, but I used the Zach Wilde JZM 800. And then there's some filter guitars, and those ones I use my 1987X Plexi, and with the, can't remember the IR, but it was some one of Jens Bulgren's IRs, they are all, all great. So many times, at least on this Syrah album, all the rhythm guitars are with a real cabinet, microphone, you know, old school, and most of the melody and lead guitars are with the reactive load and IR, just to get a different tonalities. Some leads I have played with the cabinet, but on this one only the rhythm guitars are with the cap mic cabinet. So this is, I did a very quick, quick mix, but I, it, there's no vocals and keyboards yet, but it, it sounds like this now. Sound pretty co cool. Uh, I didn't really EQ them much. I just added a little bit of top end and cut it some of the lows. I when I start to really mix this, I might do something. But uh, you know, when you record the signal sound, when you capture it, when it's very very well played, recorded, and then you use a little bit of time to get a good tone from your amp you know, from your cabinet or reactive load impulses, pulses, whatever you do, you don't really, at least I don't really have to do much when I'm mixing, because when I'm recording, my head is in the mixing, that this is the sound, this is what I'm gonna use. But usually, always, when there's more stuff, I, I uh, find myself adding, you know, some top and some air, like from 8K to sometimes to 16K, just to get that, that present, which may sound a bit harsh, on their own with guitars, but in the mix, it, it just makes them more forward. So yeah, that, that's the thing. Really, really cool, cool device. I mean, it, it's like these two one. Uh, I mean, I wasn't a surprise that this works like a charm because I've used these two on, on so many and now 
they are both housed in A1, which is really, really, really handy. Okay, let's let's check out these uh, these first. Well, I already re I already <laughs> reamped everything, so I don't have anything to reamp for this song song now. But uh, let me show you how you connect connect that. Okay, so the reamp HP headphones thing re reamper. So you need a TRS cable. Tip ring sleeve. Standard guitar cable is GS, so tip sleeve. And you know, this might depend how, how you do it with depending on your audio interface and whatnot. But I, I tried this. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm just gonna show you because this video I think it's already quite long and, and this is very simple. So TRS cable, headphone out, at least worked for me the best when I cracked the headphone out. Great. Then input to here. Then I grab a standard guitar cable, put it to output. So again, this would be kind of like my guitar. Output. And in my case, to my tuner, which is the which is the first pedal on my pedal board. Now what happens, at least in logic, so I need to choose not the stereo output, but the mono output right. That's a good rule of thumb. Reamp R right. Reamp right. So you it sends the signal from the from the right side of the of your stereo output. Because at least on, on the Steinberg AXR4 audio interface, the the stereo out and, and or the, the speaker out, main monitor out and the Headphone out are kind of like in the same, you know, pipeline. And then, you know, you do like I did. So there's a there's a mono switch. So let's say if you have a stereo information. So, so if you want to, let's say, a reamp a stereo keyboard track. Think about Van Halen, Cradle Will Rock. Van Halen played the keyboards through his Marshall Plexi and, and cabinet and, and, you know, added distortion. So you could do that reamp boring clean sounding keyboards through your you know guitar amp obviously Marshall <laughs> so then this knob will will uh, you know change it to to mono because if you've tried to put a stereo signal into guitar amp I guess it's probably it was the first and the last time <laughs> so it does that and 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 the ground lift and the same level knob here and there's the the mini mini input so you can use this directly let's say from uh, from your phone you know if you want to reamp something from your phone or maybe you have a session on your laptop you go to a studio here's my laptop you know i want to use that amp here's my session so you get the reamp signal straight into your your session really really handy hey thanks for watching hopefully you found this interesting and informative until next time, all the best, take care, bye.